God bless you, Facebook and YouTube. How you doing? This is Apostle Robert Jenkins. It's a Thursday morning, 6 a.m. Central Standard Time. God bless everybody and welcome to Divine Insight Ministries. If this is your first time, we are out of New Orleans and as always, me and my wife, I can take out the time to say thank you and God bless you. Welcome to the ministry. And as always, we like to ask you to hit that share button, share this on your page. We try to evangelize the world. And when you hit this on your page, it helps share it with your friends and it helps establish this ministry and other homes. So thank you. God bless you, everybody. Good to see you, son. Good to see you, Sister Walker. Good to see everybody. God bless you. God bless you. Sister Tracy, God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Prophet Shaming, God bless you. God bless you. So welcome everybody to Divine Insight Ministry. Sister Pearson, God bless you, Amanda. God bless you, Brother Bryant. So let's get ready to go. We're talking about part four, exposing uh, the mind of sorcery or the mindsets of sorcery. So we're going to continue that. Uh, just God just been sharing so much. I am going to talk a little bit about uh, the different things that's going on in the world concerning this corona uh, virus that's going around. And I'll just give you some insight, uh, which God has shared with me. But uh, let's get ready to, to share it on our page first, and then we'll go into prayer, and I'll talk a little bit about that. God bless you, Brother Reno. God bless everybody. Don't forget tonight, Team B, you should have received your email. Uh, Team B will be in prayer tonight. We'll be meeting together uh, every Thursday, we meet with a team as prayer partners for Divine Insight Ministries uh, to understand the covering for this ministry and what is needed for the body of Christ. And so when we meet, you should have received your email in the mail. And I, last night, I sent out the conference line number and so that you can call that conference line and we can all be together on that conference line. So God bless you. Thank you for uh, for all that you do. You know, we're sowing where we're going and we just thank you and we love you and we, God, and we bless you for it. So hit that share button, share this on your page, invite as many people out as you can. And also, if the Lord tell you, please do a watch party, okay? Do a watch party so people can see it and enjoy it and give comments and just learn to establish uh, more unity together. Good to see you, Sister Owen. I got to call you. Uh, I want to ask you a couple things. I'm trying to come that way. I'm trying to make out some kind of provisions so I can come to Charlotte. So I want to talk to you. But God bless everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Go ahead, hit that share button on your page. We also want to take out the time to say thank you for yesterday. We had covenant couples. If you didn't listen to yesterday's teaching, please go back and watch the replay. It will be a blessing to you. We cover some very uh, integral areas in life, dealing with marriage and children and bringing two families together. Uh, very key uh, wi wisdom and experience, and I think it'll be helpful for you. Demetrius, love you, my brother. I will call you sometime this week. Uh, I want us to continue talking at least once a week. And so love you. Tell your wife we said hello, and uh, let's stay in contact. So God bless everybody. Let's get ready to go into prayer and then let me talk about a couple of things. Father, I bless you for this very day. This is the day the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. God, we acknowledge you as our Lord and our Savior and our King. And God, help us to, you pray for Peter that his faith fell not. And God, when we go through anything, Lord, we ask you to help us by the hearing of your word to increase our faith. The key to all possibilities in the darkness is the lack of faith. And so, God, we trust you that we hear you and that our faith increase, that we go from little faith to much faith to more faith. And we bless you, Lord. So thank you, Lord. Cover us today as we teach this lesson, as we expose some things in the demonic realm. We ask you to have your angels surround us and we bless you because you're still God. You still sit on the throne and nothing has changed. You see everything before it ever came to pass and you have a plan in place for it. So we lean not into our own understanding, but in all thy ways, we acknowledge you and let you direct our path. So Holy Spirit, speak to us this morning. Wisdom, give us your information. You have, you are with God for everything that was established. So give us the wisdom. And we thank you. We're listening. Teach us. Guard our minds, God. Thank you, Lord, for your word that covers us. You said when, when they were in sickness and in trouble, you sent your word and your word healed them. Oh, God, let the word be a lamp into our feet and a light into our pathway. We thank you, Lord. As everyone is quoting Psalms 91, he that abides in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Oh, God, and you shall be our provision, our tabernacle, our hiding place, our shelter, and we bless you for it. In the name of Jesus, have your way today. Open our minds and challenge us until we change. Conform us and transform us into the image of your son. 
We bless you because you're God. You're still good. Your mercy endures forever. Oh, God, we bless you. Thank you, Lord. We feel your presence and we feel your covering. We feel your love. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So God bless you. God bless you. Go ahead, hit that share button. Good to see you, Sister Wright. God bless you. Go ahead and hit that share button. Sister Williams, God bless you. God bless you. God bless everybody. Uh, let me give you a couple uh, insights and a couple of things that God showed me. We know a lot of people are concerned about the corona uh, virus that is going around. And, 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 and we should be concerned anytime there is something that is taking out people that is affecting America. And we hear more and more about that. Uh, so let me share the positive and the negative of it. First of all, we understand that the world is going to get worse according to the prophecies in the Bible that the world is going to get worse. And the Bible talks about in the last days that we're going to have wars and rumors of wars and sicknesses and, and there are going to be uh, all type of diseases and plagues and different things. And so this could be a part of that as well. And so we understand that. So we prepare our hearts to understand that the world is going to get worse and that we're praying for people to come out of the world, be not conform this world, be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so we know that. At the same time, we are designed by God to walk in wisdom. And so we do not take this lightly when something like this is being released in the world because we know the wisdom of God will tell us to take heed. So we take heed to that. And so I want you to know that. But at the same time, do not allow the wisdom to walk you into, if you listen to God, to walk, don't allow the fear, I'll say, to walk you into a greater level of fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And so even though we are wise, we are not, we are also covered by God's love and, God, and by God's word, okay? And so I want you to understand that because the enemy has been trying to release fear. And the reason why fear must be released in the earth before the rapture take place is because because the Antichrist must come in a, in a way, according to the Bible, that he's going to declare peace. He's going to settle. And so the, the world has to, has to release a spirit that puts us into chaos. So when the Antichrist comes as the answer, as the Christ, as, as the antidote for chaos and peace, people will embrace this, this, this Antichrist. They will embrace, embrace this mindset because really 666 is a mindset. They're going to embrace the mindset mindset because of the chaos that has been embraced earlier. The best way to sell a solution is to create the problem. And so this is media. So on one end, uh, it doesn't change the fact that the the, the virus that is being released or that we are exposed to, it doesn't change the fact that it can't take our lives. But we are, we are, but we are, we have to use wisdom there. But at the same time, the scripture don't change that no weapon form against us shall prosper. And just like any other disease that was released, we have to trust God. So in these times, allow these times to move you into a greater relationship with God, a greater concern about following God. Then, then allowing it to walk you into fear, okay? And so you want to make sure that do do not be, uh, do not be so trivial that you ignore the problem that's going on. But at the same time, don't let it lead you into fear. The enemy wants to lead you into fear. And so understand that. Now that means use wisdom, okay? Just like if anything else, if, if, if a storm is coming, there's another Katrina coming, we use wisdom and we prepare. You move out of town. Uh, there are people who are have money aside just in case a storm come. And so that's wisdom. So the wisdom says cover up, wash your hands, uh, use sanitizer, get hope that's wisdom but at the same time while we're using wisdom we do not allow our spirit to be troubled okay don't allow it to be troubled but hold on to god the same god that protected me last year the same god that will protect me this year and matter of fact i'm gonna get closer to god okay and so that's the key the key to it is allow your spirit to grab hold to god more and watch his word come to pass uh we i'm going to use this opportunity to tell people about jesus christ because even though uh th this virus is taking out people the rapture is going to take out more and so um, you're more concerned about if, if you happen to suffer in anything, where is your soul going to be once that happens? Where are you going to end up? And so my wife always says, uh, one thing, she made the, the major thing that she's concerned about is being ready. 
is being ready. And so and so we want to focus on that and use this as a evangelistic tool that you never know what happened. It's the same attitude I had when, when Kobe Bryant passed away, him and his daughter. Uh, it was a shock. It was a devastating. But it made me think about I got to be ready because you never know when it's going to come. You never know. You never know if a plane is going to fall off the sky. You never know if a if a, a tornado going to come and tear your house down. You never know. So we have to be prepared. And that's the spirit that God wants us to move into. Move into uh, examining ourselves, being right before God, that when I see the maker or whatever may happen, I can trust God. If my, if my house get hit by a storm or whatever the case may be, I, my support is in God and in God's word and in God's ways to be able to handle that storm, okay? And whatever that storm may be, sickness, disease, or whatever. But I will not go into the spirit of fear. I will not begin to prophesy the things of the enemy, and I will not help other people move into fear. I'm going to help other people say that this is a time you really need to get close to God. This is a time we, we really need to pray and intercede. This is a time we really need to understand our word and be covered by the word, okay? And so this is very key. And so my attitude towards this is uh, take wisdom, take precautions, understand that, but we do not walk in fear. We walk in the spirit. We walk in the spirit, okay? And so we understand that. And so these things will come and other things are going to come. God has revealed different prophecies that people, God told me that uh, if you go back and watch my video tapes, I said there are diseases coming that they're going to have no cure for. God told me uh, not too long ago that, that, that our animals are going to be affected and there's going to be disease coming out of the ants. And I know that sounds crazy like ants. Yeah, there's going to be a virus or something that ants are going to be carrying. And God revealed that to me. So this is something that we should understand that's going to happen. But we do not panic in a sense because we have a peace that passive understanding. We have a peace that passive understanding, okay? And so we understand that when God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind, a sound mind to understand the wisdom of God. And this is a time that the world will see that what the, what the saints have been preaching and living is true. Because look how the saints are carrying themselves when the world is in panic, when the world is 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 don't know what to do, the saints should be able to show them the refuge that we have, the peace of God that we have, the God that we walk with, the Holy Spirit is a comforter. This is a time to demonstrate the power of God and believe. And, it, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost, it's going to wake up the power that we really have. Because watch, watch what happened. We're going to begin to lay hands on those who have corona disease. And it's going to free. The power of God should be now provoke, okay? Because now, where is the healing power now? Where is the power to heal the sick, to raise the dead? All those things that we claimed in church, well, okay, there's going to be a real situation, and now do you have power? Because I'm telling you, God is raising up the world to be able, they're going to run to the remnant. The world is not going to work. I'm telling you, and I said it before, in many of my teachings, healthcare is going to fall, hospitals are going to fall, jobs are going to fall, everything is going to fall. And what's going to stand is the remnant God's people. They still will be blessed, they still will be prosper, they still going to be prospered, and they're going to be walking. And the church is going to be the real church, the real remnant, the invisible people of God is going to be in a position to declare the power of God because the world is saying, we don't know what to do. And they're going to run to people who they know has been praying. They never stop praying. They never stop compromising. And this is when real spiritualism is going to stand up. Okay, because if you've been fake and been religion and you've been overcome by uh, witchcraft and sorcery, you're not going to be in a position to be able to stand against the things that are being released. But those people who kept praying, kept fasting, never gave up, uh, stayed in God, did not get bought out. Watch the power that they're going to have on their lives to show uh, I don't, I'm not worried about no Corona disease or any other thing because of what is invested in me. Okay. Very key, okay? And this is the time. And the world's going to run to us for, for answers, for solutions. What do we do? Uh, the president and everybody else going to be asking for prayer, okay? And now the remnant, the real remnant is going to stand up and declare the power of God, <clears throat> okay? Very key. So I want you to know that. Okay, so let's move. And then another thing, <clears throat> trying to get my voice back. And another thing, 
is that a lot of times when these things come, they are distractions from what God is saying to you. And you'll focus more on that. Do not allow this to become a distraction. Use wisdom. Use wisdom. Okay? We are we are a piece of people of wisdom. Wise dumb. Where the wise have dominion. Okay? Use wisdom. But at the same time, don't let it become a distraction. Okay, because God was doing something in your life. God was working on you. God was speaking to you. You were spending more time with God. And all of a sudden now, your whole mind is in, involved in this. And do not do not allow that. Okay, very key. All right. So thank you. We love you. God bless you. Hit that share button. Let's move on. Okay, exposing the mindset of sorcery part four. Oh, God, I just love God. I just love God. Because devil, uh, no weapon for that gets me shall prosper. When your eyes are really open, you really get to see how the devil is moving. And it becomes a joke to you because you understand where you are in God. Jesus looked at the devil and said, there's none of you in me. We got to understand the power that we really walk in and the authority that we really walk in. And that we are the sons of God. Okay, exposing the mindset of sorcery. Part, four. Part, part number one, here we go. Watch this. Point number one. Sorcery needs practitioners or it needs people. Sorcery needs volunteers. Sorcery needs workers. Point number one. Sorcery needs practitioners. Sorcery needs people. Sorcery needs workers. I want you to hear that. Point number one. In order for sorcery to do what it needs to do, the mindset, it needs a body. It needs a mind. Now, this is a very powerful point. Okay? The devil can't lie without your tongue. He can't steal without your hands. You can't commit adultery without your body. He is in search of minds and bodies to do the work. That's why it's called the work of the flesh. The book of Job and the book of Daniel, I would say it's the two best books right now to read. If you really want to understand where God is and how he's moving in the earth realm. Study the book of Job and study the book of Daniel. In the book of Job, we understand something, that the sons of God had a meeting. God calls meeting. There are meetings that goes on in the heavenlies. Now, some of the things I'm going to say today, people have a problem with, but we're going to walk heavy. We ain't got time to be messing around. We ain't got time to be carnal. We ain't got time to be trivial. We ain't got time to be surface when we see in the enemy is allowing a lot of things to be released through our disobedience. So, I, I, so I'm going to walk heavy with you, okay? Watch this. In the heavenly realms, there are always councils being called. Always. There's a meeting being called. Many times when I am teaching on here, me and you may think that we are watching Facebook, watching Apostle Jenkins teach, but really we have been called up into a council and the Holy Spirit will minister to us and give us revelation and give us insight, okay? And so there's always a meeting. In those meetings, watch this, in those meetings, the devil shows up in those meetings many times to try to infiltrate, to try to infiltrate the the the, the dialogue or try to infiltrate, infiltrate the information that is being given so that he could, watch this, deceive God's people before time. I told you, he is the prince of the air. So anything that comes down through the airways, that comes down through the airways, he tries to intercept. Very key, okay? He tries to intercept through frequency. This is the real reason why technology has grown. Technology is not grown because we are in the 20th century and we got iPhone 10s and we got satellites and we got... All of that is designed of nothing but expression. If there is a satellite that can tell you uh, what time it is from the heavenlies, well, you better believe believe that there is heavenly angels and heavenly demonic activity in the heavenlies as well that are watching signals and frequencies being released, okay? When you're dealing with sorcery, you're dealing with information from a heavenly place, whether it's the children of darkness or the children of light, and that information, those signals, okay, those towers that we call them, the reason why people like to go to AT&T or different phone companies is because it is based upon, your signal is based upon who has the most towers. And it's based upon who has the most tower determines how long your signal can last. And so, well, there are towers in the kingdom, and there are also 
powers in the kingdom of darkness. The Bible calls them principalities and powers and rulers and all of these things. You got to know that. And so they look for mindset. So there's councils being called by God and by the enemy to try to intercept. When Job, in the book of Job, we know that the sons of God got together. When they got together, the devil showed up like he was one of the sons, like he had never been promoted. And he shows up and God speaks to him as if he should have been at the meetings. God said to Job, where have you been? He speaks to him, where have you been, Job? And Job said, I've been roaming to and fro in the earth to see who I ha who I can devour. Watch this. I'm looking for minds that I can pervert. I'm looking for signals that I can use. I'm looking for people that has an open frequency to my frequency so that I can devour them and never allow them to become a son of God or walk in the wheel that you have designed for them. I'm looking for that. I search the earth to and fro. I'm roaming. Like we said, sometimes the signal is to say, what is roaming? Okay, I can't get a signal because it's roaming. Well, a lot of times the interference is the devil himself. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hit that share button, all right? But we're going somewhere today. And so he does this. So God says to him, watch this. He says, have you considered my servant Job? Uh-oh. He, he said, have you considered it? And so the devil said to him, I always have considered Job. I've been watching Job. But you know what? I can't get to him because his level of obedience has allowed a hedge to be around him. Woo! Watch this. His level of obedience. Because he loves you. He lives upright. He does what's right. And because of that... His obedience create a hedge. If you would remove the hedge from him, I promise you, he's not that faithful. He's not that loyal. But the only reason why he's serving you is because of the benefit. But it's not because he loves you. It's not one-on-one. -on -one. It's because of your goodness, not because his heart is right. Watch this. Okay, very key. So the enemy is looking for minds, and the point is, he's looking for minds to pervert because sorcery needs practitioners. It needs people. It needs workers. It needs willing minds to be open to this visitation of a demonic ram to control you, to devour you, and to devour God's people. The enemy Watch this, is upset with God because he got kicked out. But the spirit of the enemy is a murderer. He's a murderer from the beginning. Read the book. You got to get back in the book. In 1 John, he's a murderer. This is why Cain killed Abel, because Cain shows the heart that the enemy has towards God. Then Satan is upset. Woo! He's upset, right? Sis? So, and what happens is he can't fight God because he can't deal with light. So what he do? He's trying to take it out on God's people because he understands that if God has people and they're not in line with God, then they are unprotected. Oh, they are unprotected. They are unprotected. So the key to removing the hedge is to get them to go against you. Watch this. And so two things. If they go against you, the hedge, watch this, the hedge, watch this, can be taken down and I can infiltrate it. Or watch this, I can put enough pressure on the hedge that they will be distracted by the pressure on it and, and, and get into themselves, get into their own feelings because of the pressure that's coming upon the hedge and they'll, and they'll break the hedge down themselves, okay? So the point, number one, sorcery is, is in need of practitioners, okay? People, to open themselves up to this frequency, this council that's going on in the kingdom of darkness to recruit, to devour, to kill, steal, and destroy. You got to hear that. That's point number one, okay? So I also said here, the enemy is looking for mindsets that are in search for power and freedom outside of God. The number one thing that makes you available for sorcery, for bondages, is your search for power, your search for power and freedom outside of God. This is a stimulus. Now, I'm preaching heavy today, so you got to hear this, okay? This is a stimulus that all people feel. Because we're born in sin and shaped in iniquity, there is something in you that wants to be its own God. 
It, 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 it is looking for a way to have power to bring your dreams to pass. It's looking for a freedom that makes it lawlessness, that, that moves you into iniquity because you want to be able to be free and nobody tell you what to do. Not God, not anybody. And you don't even believe that you suggle or are under sorcery and they don't even believe that they're under the devil. They believe that they're under themselves, which is the form of the devil, which is idolatry of yourself or selfishness or pride or the ego and all of this was a frequency that was sent to your flesh now I'm going to say some heavy things this morning every child that is born there's a frequency that's trying to find them to try to convert them to become a child of the darkness. But there's also a frequency of God's love and God's light and God's grace and God's mercy that's trying to let you know that you were created in the image and likeness of God. And so you have two frequencies that are always battling up to try to possess or which one are you going to let live in your life. But just as much as God wants to use you, so does the devil. And the devil is hoping that in your carnality, in your carnality, you're not aware that your real desire to have power and your real desire to have freedom may have come from the enemy to try to get you to come outside of God to have your own desire for it. And this way you're going to be very careful in leadership when you want to be in power, when you want to be free, not free to serve God, but just want to be free. Because sorcery, this is a frequency from the heavenlies, but it's from the dark kingdom because don't don't think all things that come from the heavenly is not from God. He the prince of the air works in the heavenlies as well. He works in the heavenly as well. He works in that spiritual realm as well. And watch this. And there are many things that come to you. Watch this. That are coming from the devil. And you got to distinguish. Watch this. That that is not a frequency of God. And most of the time in deception. Watch this. I feel the Holy Ghost. Watch this. It, 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 it's a search for freedom. And this is where the deception come in because there's a lot of people that says, I want to be free and the truth sets you free and free indeed. The problem is your truth is not Christ. Your truth is your own independent small G to, so that you can do things your own way. So you're looking for freedom because you have embraced truth as truth what is true to you, not truth as Jesus Christ, the Lord Savior, not Jesus Christ as the incarnated one. And so this is where... This is where the deception come in because you think you just with us but there's a lot of people who talk like us walk like us uh oh watch this but their heart is not the same as us because the intent of their search is based upon freedom and power watch this to work as an independent agent not to be a servant of Jesus Christ, not to be a prisoner of the Lord, but to be an independent agent. Woo! God, I feel the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> okay? <clears throat> and sorcery is looking for these people from the time that your child is in your womb. This frequency is searching for your baby. Searching for your baby. This is where the movie Matrix is all about. And all these babies were born in the Matrix. They born in this system of control. They born in a mindset. They don't even know who they are. They don't know they're under control. They're living life, but they're really under a Matrix. Okay? That's why the Bible says, Blessed the man who the one the, the man who comes out of the Matrix. Out of this system, there's the frequency. So, so I'm exposing now. Sorcery needs practitioners. It needs it. Just like in church, we're looking for members. Well, so is the devil. So is the children of darkness. Children of darkness. How can darkness produce children? Darkness is the absence of light. Darkness is not a substance. But there are children being born out of this because there's a frequency, this longing. This is why you got to pray and cover your kids. We got to get back to some things that God spoke to me today. We got to get back to anointing ourselves before we walk out of our house. We got to get back to anointing our children at night. We got to get back to family prayer at night. We got to get back to some things we have left because there is frequency. And this is why the sorcery is in the music. It's in the media. It's in YouTube. It's in Facebook. It's in everything. It's in the clothes. It's in everything because it's trying to constantly shape your children's mindset 
and they don't even realize that there's a frequency in the sound that they listen to, the clothes that they put on, what they watch on TV, in their school systems. All of these frequencies are trying to support, watch this, demonic activity, self-independence, self-freedom, self-power that is separate from Jesus Christ and God himself, okay? Very key. Because sorcery needs practitioners, it needs workers, and it needs to grow. And the enemy is trying to build an army. And it is, and it has, and it has released a sound in the earth that will draw your children right out of your house. And all of a sudden, they will hear their friends more than they hear you. They will believe in that sound. They'll believe in that worldly attractions more than they believe in you. And your standards for God will not be attracted to them because they have already been connected to a frequency that is controlling them and they don't even know it. Okay? Very key. Because it needs practitioners, okay? Here we go. Watch this. There is a call to all flesh from the heavenly realm. There's a divine call that God is trying to wake us up to who we are. But there's a demonic call. Watch this. There's a demonic call to try to shape your children to walk in the course of the devil. Now, if you need Bible for that, let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And I want to show you something. Give me some time today. Ephesians chapter 2, all right? Let's walk through. If you're just coming on, hit that share button and share this on your page, okay? Pay attention today. Pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. Pay the cost to attend. Watch this. You got to pay the cost to attend. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. The spirit, is, the spirit is talking. The spirit is talking, okay? Don't let nobody interrupt God. Watch this. Here we go. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you have equiquened. We are three triune beings, we got to understand this. We are spirit, we are soul, we are body. We are three triumph beings. The spirit of who we are must be quickened. When Adam and Eve sinned, they shall surely die. The day you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. Death to God is separation. And so the soul and the spirit will separate. That's very key. Sorcery is looking for a soul that's not connected to the spiritual birth. That's not, that's not connected to the spiritual breath. Okay? When God breathed into man, man became a living soul. Man was never supposed to live outside of the breath of God. That life, that breath of God just wasn't the breath that he's breathing. It was a little spiritual DNA. It was the hard drive of the soul. The soul was never to be his independent God. The soul was never to run the body. Never. The soul was never to be the number one leader. The soul was always supposed to be the transmitter to the body. And so the spirit is the hard drive of God. Those who are led by the spirit are the sons of God. They that worship God must worship God in spirit because the spirit was supposed to be the leader because the spirit is God. God is a spirit. God is a spirit. They that worship God must worship God in spirit, must worship God in God. See, watch this. And so God is a spirit. So when he breathed into man, and man had a consciousness. Then we get this word from soul, consciousness, psyche, okay, the mind. But what happened was when they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that's the day that they died. But they didn't die physically. Watch this. They died. In other words, the soul was separated from the spirit. When that happened, now your emotions, your intellect, and your will, which are the three components of the mind, they took over as the leader. And the minute they took over as a leader, this is why God says to Eve, watch this, now your husband should have rule over you. God never wanted the man to have rule over the woman. The original intent was, was to them, watch this, to them to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish. But because of the woman, she represents the soul. That's why she's your soul mate. She is the representation of the soul. So he said to the soul, now the spirit has to have rule over you. But because you're disconnected from the spiritual ruler or the spiritual lover of your soul, God, I'm going to give you a physical ruler, your husband, until I come back as the husband man. Watch this. So now all of a sudden, Adam has to take rulership over his wife because of the soul being disconnected from the spirit. Now, the problem with this is, is that a consciousness, watch this, there you go, there you go. a whole new consciousness, that's right, Brother Michael, was added. 
was added. So when this conscience was added, this is why God says after Adam, who told you you were naked? Oh, who taught you how to sow fig leaves? Who taught you how to hide? Who taught you how to be afraid? I never gave you the spirit of fear. What do you mean you hid yourself? You have never been afraid of the spirit. You have never been afraid of God. You've never been afraid of, 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 of love. But all of a sudden now, fear was down low to you. Blaming was down down low to you. Hiding was down low to you because the soul is in operation. The carnal mind is in operation without the life that God wanted us to have. That life was this. You should surely die. That's why when Jesus come, he says, I'm coming to give you life and life more abundantly. He really comes as a give, give us back to quicken us back to that original place that the soul and the spirit work together as one. Okay. Now this is very key. So when you get saved, you don't get a, a new spirit, you get the original spirit God had for you that was separated. Jesus is the connection back to that spirit, okay? So that spirit has to be quickened because it was separated. It has to be quickened. The soul has to be renewed. Why? Because the old nature, the, car the carnality soul took over. It took over. Watch this. So now I got to renew this mind, but this mind has been renewed by following, by being led by the spirit. Okay? Now watch this. Watch this. This is the key. So, and you, back to Ephesians chapter 2. I want to help you out with something. Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. And you has he quickened. Who were dead. You were dead. Separated. But you was dead in something. You were dead in trespasses. And sins. Woo! That's right. The soul has to be renewed. So to tell me, watch this. We're in in times past. Now watch Paul gives us a revelation of really what happened when this happened. This is what sorcery depends on. Okay? He says, we're in in times past. You walked. You walked according to the course of this world. There is a course of the world. Watch this. We got to know the difference between the carnal mind, the world, and the church. Woo, God, we teach you today. You got to know the difference between the carnal mind, the world, and the church. So he says, before your spirit was quickened, before God brought you back to the spiritual place, awaken you to who you really are, awaken you to how you should operate under the spirit Guiding the spirit should be the driver and the soul should be should, the, the soul should be the passenger on the right hand. Your soul is supposed to be the passenger. The spirit is supposed to be in the wheel, but the passenger is right there. And the, and the spirit is supposed to talk to the soul. The soul puts the body under subjection, and that's how you're successful. Well, there is a there is a there is a interruption to try to move God out. And when you sin, what's this? Sin, the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is separation from the clarity of how the spirit was going to move. I don't know what the spirit would have said here because I'm out of range. I'm out of frequency. I missed the mark. I can't hear. I, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Hey, can you hear me now? I can't hear the call. I can't hear what God is saying because it's a dissonance. There's, uh oh, one of the poles fail. Uh oh, one, one of the Powers have been disconnected. Watch this. Here we go. Where in the times past, you walk according to the course of this world. The course of this world. Of this world. Love not this world, neither the things that are in it. There is a arrangement of the world. There is a frequency of the world. There is a there is a system of the world. There are agents in the world. There are demonic activities in the world. There is powers and principalities and powers and rulers of darkness that are sending frequencies and vibrations and callings of this world. Whoa, he says, and before your spirit was quicken you were under their uh oh you were under their seduction you was under and didn't know it he says according to the prince of the power of the air in order to the prince and the power of vibrations Woo! you better hear this 
He said, and the spirit that now works in the children of what? Disobedience. Because obedience brings the hedge. Children of disobedience. And every time your child go against the will of God, a man goes against the will of God, a woman goes against the will of God, a preacher goes against the will of God, you have allowed the wrong vibration, the, the wrong signal to influence you. To influence you. To influence you is in the air. Watch this. Verse 2. Among whom also we all had our conversations in the times past. We spent time talking to lust. He said we had conversations with it. We talked with these spirits. We talk and we don't realize there's demonic activity. I feel the Holy Ghost. The devil is mad. Watch this. Watch this. He, we've had conversations with these demons. You ain't just had sex. You had conversations with, with demonic activity. For every physical expression of sin, there's a demonic, there's an entity behind that sex. There's an entity. There are demons behind adultery, fornication. There's an entity behind it, witchcraft. There's a spiritual realm. There's a communication. The devil is teaching you something about lying. About about depression, there is a education going on. Who told you you were naked? They, there is a there is a school, a school. Children of darkness are wiser than the children of light. There's some wisdom, some cunningness that is given by the devil to teach you how to hide, how how to work source without you knowing it, how to dominate, how to control, how to become your own god, make your own decisions, live live in iniquity, which lawlessness. Nobody tells you what to do. I'm grown already. All of these spirits, all of these mindsets. That's right. It's all communication. That's it. Having conversations in the time past, in the lust of the flesh. Who taught you? You say, I'm freaky. I'm, I'm this. I'm a killer. I'm a murderer. Who taught you how to hate? Who taught you how to be that depressed? How did you know to go that dark? How did you know? Because you had conversations with it. Because there is a spiritual entity behind every physical seer, either every physical gesture. And so sorcery is looking for practitioners to be able to teach them how to do it. How, how to can know how to kill his brother. Oh, who told you you were naked? Who's downloading something? Who? What frequency are you picking up? And we don't even realize the frequencies. We have allowed the devil in our frequencies, in our music in church, in our in our, in our establishment of it. Oh, the enemy. Man, I can't even get it all out. Among whom we have our conversation time passed in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh. What is the desires of the flesh? To become his own God. He said, the day you eat of this fruit, you shall be like God, knowing good and evil, which means now you don't need the spirit to distinguish for you what is good and evil. You will say within yourself what's good for you, what's bad for you. You will say if you want to be male or female. You will say if you want to be white or black. You will say if you want to call yourself a Christian or not a Christian, you will begin to become your own God. You will create your own Bibles, your own religion, your own system. You will do it because now you have the knowledge of good and evil and you don't need the spirit to discern. You don't need no one to lead you. You can lead yourself. This is the work of the flesh, fulfilling those desires of the flesh and of the mind. Uh-oh. He said you had conversations and you decided to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Flesh, I'm going to give you what you want. And I'm going to give you what you think. See, and so now there are people grabbing scriptures, they're grabbing biblical principles, but their heart is not tied to God, and it looks like they're with us, but they'll say stuff like this, what so man think of, so is he. The problem with that scripture is, you can't think what you want to think, you got to have the mind of Christ, but you grab that verse so that you can be free in your own mind to your own God, which is you. See, yes, see, desires of the flesh and of the mind and word by children and word by nature, the children of wrath, even as others. Okay, so point number one, he's looking for practitioners and there is a frequency that's trying to call you to it, trying to call you to it. And it will use church hurt. It will use offense. It will use anything you've ever been through 
to try to support that frequency so that you will lean to your own understanding. You won't do what the Bible says. The Bible says lean not to your own understanding. But there is a there is a frequency, a vibe, a vibration, a call, a pull that's trying to say be your own God. You believe what you want to believe out of that Bible. You interpret what you want to inter see what you want to see in it. Woo! Okay? Right? And it really looks for people who are in search for power and freedom. Okay? All right. Point number two. Man, God is moving. Point number two. Sorcery is the practice of using supernatural means lawfully by submission. Sorcery is the practice of using supernatural means lawfully by submission. The only problem with it is God didn't give the submission. God didn't give the mission. God didn't give the okay. The enemy can release information in the arena he has authority over. The enemy has legal rights to darkness. He has fatherly rights to lies. He has natural rights to the flesh. The works of the flesh are these. So any of those things that you are working in the flesh, he has the authority to influence and to suggest and to have control over. The stimulus from it comes from him. Okay? So sorcery is just, watch this. The sorcery is the practice of using this supernatural means. Because you got to believe in the supernatural to do sorcery. It ties into the spiritual realm. This is why you hear stuff like, and I'm going to talk about a lot of stuff that's going to bring up controversy, but that's okay. Like there's a, there's a teaching that goes out called the laws of attraction. And the laws of attraction tell you that whatever you think in your mind, the universe will bring it to you. That is a divine principle from God. The problem is that it's not supposed to be a secret. That problem is, is that it's supposed to be tied to Christ. And Christ lets us know that when we think on these things, when we think on these things, we understand the principles, but the devil, what he does is the devil is not a creator. He is a thief. So what he does is he cop, he tries to get people to use the principles of God because he knows that principles work. Principles are not saved principles or unsaved principles. They are principles, but there are principles that were given to the saints. The problem is, is with what belongs to the saints the ants use and they work it as a principle. This is sorcery. Every law that sorcery use, it is only, that's right, bootlegging. It is only using the principle that God gave to the people of God. They're using it for their own gain, for their own profit. But the principle work because God is a God of law. And because he's a God of law, the law don't change because an unlawful person is using it. Woo, you got to get it. The law, the law, there's a law. Two plus two is four. That's the laws of mathematics. So the enemy knows that if I can get them to use God's law, the law will work whether they're saved or unsaved because it's a law. So sorcery, watch this, is practicing the supernatural laws and they have given permission by the darkness to do it. See, watch this. Very key. That's why you have to be tied to God because if you're not tied to God, you will use your charisma. God has given you charisma. Anybody that's anointed has charisma. You can use your charisma to influence people to come to church or to come to your bedroom. But the law of influence works. It works. The ground is designed to grow things. So you can plant tomatoes in the ground or you can plant marijuana 
in the ground. You can plant poppy seeds. The ground don't say I belong to the Lord. The earth is the Lord's. I'm not going to grow marijuana. The ground will grow the marijuana. It's going to grow the poppy seeds because this is what I do in the law of the ground. And so what happens is sorcery, watch this, because it, the spirit of it looks for a practitioner. Then it teaches it. I'm going to teach you how to practice these laws to, for you to become your own God. Ooh, that's right, Charlotte. That's why you got to know the spirit you're working with, because you can get deceived by the law. You get deceived. You got wicked people working a divine law for their own profit. See, that's why the Bible says, try the spirit by the spirit. Don't try the law. Try the spirit because it's a law. It works. There are people who never believed in God, but they believe in the law of sowing and giving. You have businesses that believe in sowing. And so they have learned how to get rich offer a godly principle of sowing. Even though they don't want God, they want his principles so that they can be, can become God within themselves. So I've met people who are atheists, but they say, I give. I'm a giver. That's a godly principle. What do you mean you give and you only believe in God? But I believe in the principle. There are people who believed in tithes and they'll tell you my business has been successful because we tithe. Are, are, are you religious? No. Do you, do you go to church? No. Are you saved? No. Well, why do you tithe? Because I realize the power of their principle. The devil is making people more aware. Use God's principle and become your own God. Eat of a tree that God created. And if you do that, you can become your own God and know good and evil and work it for yourself. And so there are people that are adopting godly principles out of the Bible. Never been saved, never been baptized in the Holy Ghost, never been filled with the Holy Ghost, not trying to have the fruits of the Spirit, but they do want the principles of the Spirit to be able to become their own God. And this is sorcery. And guess what? It is what we see majority of the time in church. Persuasion is a law. Influence is a law. Convincing is a law. Woo! These are laws. They got books on how to empower people. There's a law. Okay? Sorcery, point number two, is the practice of using supernatural means lawfully by submission. Okay? Let's go to... Uh, man, I wish I had more time this morning. Uh, let's go to Ephesians... Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. That's right, Brother Gregory. Con men practice this. See, there's laws. Laws of attractions is a law. That's why it's called the law of attraction. Why is it called the law of attraction? They'll tell you, but you can, you can be, everybody can be open to this law. And people buy that book, they buy those videotapes, and they don't believe in God, but I want to I wanna be rich. And it, it, it comes on with this crazy music, this very gothy music. Mm, the secret. See? Secrets. What is secrets? Secrets are nothing but knowledge. Listen, sorcery deals with information and knowledge that most of the world has not embraced so that you will have this extra knowledge so that you can become powerful and you can become free and free of debt. See, that sounds good. I want to be free of debt, but your desire to be free of debt may put you in your own God. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Thank you for sowing. We're sowing where we're going. See? But it is hidden information. Anybody who's into this, they'll tell you, I know something, man. I know how to get them to do it, man. I know how to do it. I know something they don't know. It's hidden knowledge. But there's supposed to be no private interpretation of the scriptures. Okay, here we go. Ephesians chapter 6. Uh, watch this. Uh, verse 10. Very common, very common. 
Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Finally, my brother, be strong in who? Don't be strong in you. Don't be strong in your knowledge, but be strong in the Lord, in the Lord. He is our Lord, Savior Jesus Christ. Anytime you're after power, knowledge, and freedom outside of Christ, you are being, you are being connected to, watch this. That's right. You can see the you can see the perversion dripping from it, Tia. But there's a lot of powerful laws in that movie. There's a lot of powerful more laws in that teaching. There's a lot of books out that has a lot of godly laws, but it's mixed. It's the knowledge of good and evil. Oh, it's a mix. And because you are not connected to the spirit, you are never supposed to be able to be able to discern the knowledge of good and evil outside of the spirit. The Holy Ghost is the is what he is the spirit of truth. How do you know truth about good and evil without the Holy Ghost? This is another way to inform people how to become their own gods. See? Watch this. Finally, my brother, be strong. We got to be strong, but we got to be strong in the Lord. I, I am bought with a price in the Lord, in the Lord, in the Lord. That's right. It takes God's law and his language. And we're going to talk about that and taint it. But if you're not a student of the word, if you're not a student of the spirit, then you'll be operating under that frequency, under that vibration and not even knowing that you is really demonic influence. <laughs> That's right. You can't mix God's principles. Absolutely right, Brother Michael. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, not mine. In the power of his might. Watch this. Put on the whole armor of God. Here we go. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against, stand against what? Stand against what? You, in order for you to stand, you got to put on the whole arm of God. What are you standing against? You got to ask questions. And when you read the Bible, you must ask questions. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be standing against what? Stand against what? The wiles of the devil. What does the word wiles mean? Let's start being a student of the word. Wiles, the word wiles in the Greek is the word strategies. Strategies of the devil. Strategies. Stand against the wiles of the devil. The, wild, the first thing you got to be able to deal with is the whole arm of God is to come against the wiles of the devil. The wiles of the devil. The devil has strategies. Sorcery, there is a strategy to it. There's a strategy why I'm pulling divine laws to for, for me to become my own God. To put me in a place of power. To put me in a place of no without God. There's a strategy. There's a strategy. I want to kill, steal, and destroy. He has a strategy. He comes as a as a sheep in a wolf as in sheep clothing. There's a strategy. He turns into an angel of light. There's a strategy. He was more cutting than any beast of the field. There's a strategy. He crept in unaware. There's a strategy. Oh, he's a strategy. He's a deceiver. He deceives. There's a strategy. Why did, why did God say that to you? He's not just asking you questions. There's a strategy. Uh, he said to Eve, has God said? He don't want to know what God said. There was a strategy. There was a strategy. Why don't you tell the handmaid to have to have sex with, with your husband since you can't have no babies? There's a strategy. There's a strategy. Why don't you trick your, trick your brother out of the birthright? Trick your father out of the blessing? There was a strategy. Oh, there's a strategy. Why did he come to Peter? Why he desire? Peter and the devil desire to sift thee as wheat. Why do you want to sift Peter? There's a strategy. Why do you want Moses' body? There's a strategy. There's a strategy. There's a cunning. There's a strategy. The wiles of the devil. Sorcery works and have learned how to master the strategies of this frequency, this vibration. Woo, watch this. Are you there? That's right. He says, so I call this the fivefold ministry of the devil. The fivefold ministry of the devil. We talk about the fivefold ministry of God according to Ephesians 5 and 11. You have a, and he said, he, he first apostles, secondary prophets, thirdly teachers, pastors, uh, I mean, uh, 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 apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Okay, that's the fivefold ministry. Apostle, the thumb, is the one that has the gap because the apostle can touch all five. It can influence all five. Okay, the apostle. First, the apostle, 
It's the only one, the gifting that faces because the original apostles was the first prophets in the New Testament that proclaimed the word of God. They were the first evangelists, the first pastors, and the first teachers. The apostles. Then you have the prophet. That's this finger, the index finger. That said the Lord. That said the Lord. And God said. Then you have the evangelist, which is the longest finger on the hand. It's the outreach finger because the word evangelist means to, uh, to compel them to come, to outreach in its outside. So it's the longest one that extends to the world, the evangelist. Then you have the pastor, which is the next finger, okay? Then you have the teaching, which is this pinky, which is the smallest one because we get less of out of all of them, okay? And so there's a fivefold ministry, but there also is a fivefold ministry of the devil. We got to know the fivefold ministry because for every action, there is a reaction. For everything in the, in the light, there is a darkness. So if there's an apostolic, apostles do what? They establish foundation. Apostles establish order, right? In other words, apostles really have the mind of God. They show you how God is thinking. God establishes his foundation, his strategies. They set up order, how it works. So if the apostles is what? What's, it is the one that set that up. Watch this. Watch this. Here we go. So then, who is equivalent to the apostle on the dark side? What's equivalent to the apostle on the dark side is the very first one to stand against the wiles of the devil. The wiles of the devil is the apostolic strategies from the dark side. Uh-oh. From the dark side. From the dark side, strategy. Those who carry the strategies, that's what that's equal to the apostles. And so if you have an apostolic call on your life, your job is to tear down the strategies of the devil, expose witchcraft, expose. That's why real apostles, they see sorcery, they can see control, they can see manipulation, they can break down. Why that's off? Why is the law of attraction wrong? Why is these scriptures you say they use them out of order? Because I am an apostle. And my job is to see the strategies of the devil. And the devil want to make sure the strategy is to kill every apostolic man and woman of God. To never allow them to have a voice to establish order. Because the strategies cannot deceive if the apostle shows up. This is the real reason why sorcery has taught the church there are no more apostles. Because if we believe there's no more apostles and no more prophet, then the strategies... Why Watch this. Here it is. First one, stand against the wiles of the devil. That's strategies. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. The principalities are principles in place. When the strategies establish the principles, it works in the church because we don't believe in prophets and apostles. And so if the strategy removes the apostles and the principles replace the prophetic, now what's this? The demonic system says we can take over because the first two are in place. We have our strategies in place in the church and we have our principles established in the church. And because there's no apostle to tell the people that's not God's strategy, we have no prophetic word that say those are not God's principles. They are not being used right. They are being used perverted. But since the people don't believe in the apostles and the prophet as a New Testament church, then the strategies and the principalities are taking over. Principalities are nothing but principles in places. Woo! That the sorcery has a teaching. It's called in the Bible the doctrines of devils. Woo! And these principles are being in place. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's right. They're lying to us and we won't listen to them. Watch this. Uh, watch this. So he says, the first one, stand against the wiles of the devil. One, against, watch this, against principalities. Two, against powers. Three, against rulers of darkness. Four, against spiritual wickedness in high place. Five. Five things we must stand against. We got to stand against wiles of the devil. One, stand against, watch this, here we go, I'm reading it, principalities, principles in places. Two, powers, authorities, watch this, powers, watch this. Three, against rulers of darkness, teachers of the darkness, educators of the darkness, philosophers of the darkness, ooh, Morpheus of the darkness. 
rulers of the darkness of this world. This world. So when you tied into the world, you tied into a blindness, you tied into a ruler. The real reason why we haven't been able to break things in the house of God, because we don't challenge the principalities. We so busy fighting somebody in the building. We not dealing with the principality in the air. Quit trying to have a deliverance service in your church when your city is under a ruler. Your city is under a ruler. Evangelism has to deal with the city. You got to conquer the city, the what, what spirit is over your city, you may have a small victory in your church, a small victory in your home, but you'll never stop gang banging, you'll never stop poverty, you'll never stop depression, you'll never stop certain things, because you don't deal with the principality, first you gotta get with an apostle and a prophet to expose the, the, the strategy that the devil has for your city, that's why certain cities have a stronger influence, certain cities are more stronger in homosexuality because that's the spirit over that city. Certain cities have a stronger gambling spirit, a certain music. There's a reason why certain sounds comes out of Motown, come out of Detroit. There's a reason why you got Barry Gordon come out of Detroit, but you got the Winans, you got the Clark sisters, you got you got a uh, uh, Fred Hammond come out of Detroit. There's a sound that's supposed to go against the sound that was released in that city. But because we don't know who we are as worshiper, you don't know why you are given a certain sound in a certain city. Ooh, I can't take it. Oh, you don't understand it. There's principalities over your city. David killed the bear and the lion in his private life, but he didn't win the city until he dealt with Goliath. Goliath was the, was the giant over the city. So even though you having small victories in the woods, your brothers are still under a Goliath. Who is this uncircumcised giant that y'all getting dressed for war, but y'all won't fight? They got dressed every morning, grabbed their guns, grabbed their knives, grabbed their swords, but nobody was... Nobody was bold enough to fight Goliath. We got preachers. All you want to do is brag about what you did in your church and, and freedom came into church, but you have never been bold enough to come against a Goliath spirit for your city. For your city. And so your children, after leaving church, go right back in a school system that is under the rulers of darkness. Go right back to hospitals that are under the rulers of darkness. Go right back into a world, Walmart stores, that is under a principality over the city. Atlanta, why do you think so many saints are moving to Atlanta? Because Atlanta has been that has been has been infiltrated by a serious rulers of darkness and God has sending people there to fight against that but if you don't know your you ain't there to get a job God ain't move you to a city so he can pay you more money God don't need to move you to give you a better education a better house you move based upon the calling you are to expose these strategies, principalities. You write, Sister Charmaine, you got certain cities, they got a stronger spirit of suicide rate. In this city, more people kill themselves. In this city, more people are uh, transvestites. In this city, that's, those are principalities, rulers of darkness. Spiritual wickedness, which means they are spiritual. They're wicked but they're wicked in a spiritual fashion. Ooh, I gotta stop. Oh, see? Okay, let's go back. Let's go back. Now you gotta get this. You're gonna have to watch this over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Okay, watch this. Sorcery is the practice of using supernatural means. How do we know it? Supernatural means? Ephesians 6 just told us. It just told us. Five strategies, principalities, Powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. See? All right. Point number three. You must be spiritually strong to deal with sorcery in your life. This is why we got to grow up. One of the reasons why God has called me to come against things that has hurt us in church. You can't keep teaching people that they're sheep. Leaders, you can't do it. Because they got to learn sonship so they can have spiritual warfare. You don't give a sword to a baby. If you keep them babies, they will never grab their sword. We need people that's going to fight. Sheep do not fight wolves. You got to grow them up. 
lead them to the slaughter so they can transition. Sheep is a mentality that you have when you first get saved. But you can't stay there. You got to move into sonship. You got to fight. Our weapons are not carnal, but mighty through God through the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds is demonic activity tied to your emotion because your husband is not in place. Your husband, the spiritual man, must be in place to be able to tell you, do not let that emotion live here. Okay? Very key. You got to be spiritually strong. So here comes apostolic again because the enemy has a strategy. His strategy is that keep, he tells the people there are influenced, there are leaders that were influenced by demonic activity. There's a vibration that told every pastor in order for you to lead them, keep them as sheep. So start saying that's your sheep. Tell them they sheep. Tell them that, that, that they trying to be grown. Tell them that there's wrong for them to grow up. Tell them not to listen to nobody else. Tell them them, uh, don't read no other books. Tell them, uh, be loyal to you only. You are the only voice. This is a vibration. This is a, 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 a frequency that was released to leaders and sorcery sent this message out. They sent out messages. They sent out frequencies and the church leadership picked it up and started doing it. And because you are still a sheep, when we need you to fight devils, when we need you to fight spiritual warfare, when we need you to come against this, you are not bold enough. You're not strong enough to be able to handle this level. So even the level of truth uh, bothers you because you're crying because you're still a baby. You still need change. We have made churches babysitters. You are. This is not a babysitting. You are not a daycare. You're supposed to be building people up, catching, training, and releasing. But because we're not doing that, when it's time for battle, we don't have no people that's adults. The Bible says don't let a novice teach, but you're not training them to come out of being a novice. Woo, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. See? So you must be spiritually to deal with sorcery because you're dealing with rulers. You're dealing with spiritual wickedness. Very cunning. See? Very key. All right? Point number four, I got to stop. Our defense, according to the armor of God in Ephesians chapter six, our defense, we have a defense armor and we have an offense weapons. We have a defense. The armor is defense. It comes against what's coming against it. You got to know your offense of armor, but you, I mean, your defense of armor, but you also must know your offense of weapon. Your weapons is an offense. Weapons is a offense weapon. The armor is a defense. So the shield of faith can be used for both. The shield can block the darts and it, you can battle. You can hit somebody with the shield. Faith. Is a, is a powerful weapon, defense and offense. But the helmet of salvation, helmet of salvation, that's a, that's a defense armor. See, a defense armor. Now we have used salvation as a weapon to send people to hell. Wrong. You are describing the armor improperly. Salvation is a defense armor. The helmet that's why when it comes to the shield, it says above all, above all, raise the shield of faith above all. Cause without faith is impossible to please God. That's an offense. The, 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 the sword is a offense. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. See, that's an offense. So with the shield, I fight to get people free. I block when I'm running towards the enemy. The kingdom of God suffers so violence, but the violence taken by force. Okay? And, and, and the Bible says, the gates of hell shall not prevail, which means we come into the gates of hell. We literally go into the gates of hell in people's minds, and we push our way through. By faith, we push our way through. By love, we push our way through. And the, and the, and the hell mindset cannot prevail against us. It can't hold us back. See, but we got to understand this. See, in order to deal with sorcery, you got to understand the strategy and you must understand your armor because your armor is God. It is, it is God. It is how God works in defense and how God works in offense. Okay. It's the armor of God. Put you there, the, put you therefore on the armor of God. It's God, salvation, peace, righteousness, faith. 
See, you put it on God in order, but you put it on God in order to do battle against what? Against the fivefold mindsets of the enemy. Woo! Okay. Very key. So our, our defense armor and offense war armor, and they both are spiritual. These are spiritual armors. Salvation is spiritual. How do I know a person is saved? As the wind blows. As the wind blows. And no one knows where it came. And no one knows where to go. So is everyone who's born of the spirit. Born of the spirit. Born of the spirit. See? Very key. See? Very key. Our defense army and office are both spiritual. Okay. Oh, I got to come to close. That's point number four. Part, point number five. Our true enemy is a spiritual enemy. Is a spiritual enemy. Quit dealing with people and start dealing with. If you want to know, what do I deal with? It's not your husband. It's not your wife. It's not your kids. You're dealing with a strategy for your house that's turning up your marriage. You got to identify the strategy. What was the devil intent? Why did he not want you and your wife together? Why did he want you not to love your son? Why did he want you out of the city? Why did he want you broke? You got to discover why does the enemy want you depressed? What is it about you that he is so intimidated that he has to attack you in these areas. You have to, through apostolic teaching, apostolic anointing, apostolic mindset, each apostle prophet is nothing but a measure of faith. So there's a level of faith that teach you apostolic understanding so you can identify the strategy against your life. There's a reason why everybody in your family got pregnant at 15. This is not just because y'all sexual. This is a strategy from the devil. This is a frequency that is released to your lineage to make sure everybody in that lineage, grow up and mature. Grow up before time. There's a strategy that he's after. Quit blaming the kids. Everybody getting pregnant. Everybody wow. You better see the strategy that's behind your family. Yes, God. See, our real enemy is a spiritual enemy. It's not flesh and blood. We're attacking one another and you're not dealing with the strategy. You're not dealing with the principalities. There are principles in place. You're not dealing with the powers, the rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. The devil studies your profile to know how to come against your family lineage. I can't let Jacob ever know he's Israel because there's 12 sons in him. 12 sons in him. Baby, where's that thing you, you got for me the other day and I said I was going to teach on it? I don't know. I'll show it to you. I'll show it to you tomorrow. So you got to know what's in you. He never wanted Paul to ever be converted because Paul, you will understand the mysteries of the church. You got to know the strategies. See? Our true enemy is a spiritual enemy. Spiritual enemy. Okay? Very key. That's point number five. Point number six. Sorcery is the manipulation of the spiritual realm. Sorcery are nothing but practitioners who have made themselves available through their own need for power and freedom. Their own need for power and freedom. They have made themselves available to, to manipulate the spiritual realm, to manipulate God's laws. That's all it is. They study and craft. I've never met more people in my life who don't, who, who, who don't believe in the full life of Christ, but they're getting degrees in theology. You got people who don't believe in Jesus, but they're getting degrees in theology. Why are you getting a degree in theology and you don't believe in God? Why are you reading the Bible? And, and Brother Berean talked about it a couple of days ago. He said, you got people, they study in this book. Witchcraft workers, they're studying this book. Sorceries, they're studying this book. Warlocks, they're studying this book. In the movie Eli, you got to, how oh, we miss it. In the movie Eli with Denzel Washington, there was, there was a, 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 something had happened to the land. The land was in famine and the land was just ruined. And there was one guy that was trying to run the world. And he said, it's barely any water. It's barely any food. It's barely anything. He said, but find me that book. Find me that book. If I can get that book, I don't care if ain't no water left, ain't nothing left. Find me that book, because if I can get that book, I can control the minds of people. Because of the principles. See? 
You got a lot of people attacking the Bible now because they say the slave masters gave you the book. The slave masters gave us the book because they understand the power of belief from the principles that are in there. So if I manipulate the principles and tell you obey those who have ruled over you, you will be a submitted slave because you believe in what the book says. And the book is right. You manipulating the scripture to have power over us. And they've always used the book to manipulate. The book is not the problem. How we using it? Because the devil can't create. So he got to steal. He got to kill. He got to destroy what God has already assigned. Woo! My wife brought me this. I don't know if you can see this. This is a saint's thing in which she got it to me. I said, oh, that's nice. That's nice. Now, this is this is what the enemy is after, right? This is you. This is me and you. See this right here? Look at it real good, right? Look at it. Now, the enemy says, if I get this, say this is Robert Jenkins. I got to kill Robert Jenkins. I got to steal Robert Jenkins. But this is not just about Robert Jenkins, because guess what? Guess what? Inside of Robert Jenkins is another generation. See that? See that? So when he was after me, he was really after this generation. Inside of this generation is another generation. See? Here you go. Inside of this generation is another generation. See that? Inside of this generation is another generation. See? I got one, two, three, four, five generations, five-fold ministry, all inside of other generations. Now, if I educate this generation and this generation grows, each generation gets more wicked. What happens when this generation is influenced by false talk, doctrine, religion, sorcery? They will run the world. And the child shall leave them all because of this generation's bondage. Yes, God. Because this generation don't teach this generation. And this generation don't teach just this generation. And this generation don't teach this generation. Now you notice that in order for all these generations to be inside of one another, that the head got smaller. We went from a large head to a small head. You got to know what's inside of you. You got to know why the attacks are so great on your life. Yes, yes, yes. You got to know what the enemy is really trying to do. Yes. That's how it started. Now what's inside of you? What's inside of you that the enemy wants to control? What's inside of you that the enemy wants to dominate? Because a lot of times people see this and they don't know all what's in there. I took out five people that's inside this one. You got to see the sorcery. If I can tell you something's wrong, you're going to teach five people. That's why in, in the book of Hosea, yesterday he said, I, you can be no longer a priest for me, neither from your children. Because he know that your children learn what you learn. If you don't get free, then all the people that's inside of you won't get free. If you don't break loose, the people inside of you won't break loose. When you said, I'm coming out, you ain't just coming out by yourself. This is what it really means when it says, in Adam, all die. In Christ, we're hid in Christ. We are hid in Christ. All is made alive. Who are you hid in? Okay, I got I to gotta close. Point number six, sorcery is the manipulation of the spiritual realm. This is why we have to expose it. Because it's trying to use the laws of God to bring God's people under protection. I mean, under bondage. All right? Father, we thank you for this word today. Thank you for clarity. You've given us a lot today. Allow us yes. to digest it. Allow us to meditate on it. Meditation for the right place and not the wrong place. And teach us more to identify the difference between light and darkness. You separated light and darkness. Let us know how to separate light and darkness. Oh God, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. We love you. 
Thank you for coming out yesterday. If you didn't see yesterday's teaching, go back and watch Covenant Couples. It'll be a blessing to you. I'll see you tomorrow for part five. And tomorrow, I think if the Lord says the same, I'm going to show you about maybe 20 or 25 things that look the same. That Like, like I'll give you an example. We are called to meditate, but sorcery is teaching people meditation too. What's the difference between your meditation and their meditation? A lot of Christians are getting into yoga and they're getting into meditation. And they'll say the Bible says to meditate. But is the meditation in Psalms 1 the same meditation that you're doing in yoga? No, it's not. It's sorcery. See, he's using the same language. He's using the same thing, but it's not the same spirit. Okay? And I'm going to show you about 25 things that we do and sorcery do that look like we are the same. Okay? God bless you. I love you. See you tomorrow. Part five of exposing the mindset of sorcery. Thank you for giving all those who sow the seed. We thank you for that. And, um, and just God bless you. Okay. We love you. And we'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Walk in God's favor.